You know, whenever the topic of mental health comes up, the conversation almost always jumps straight to brain chemistry, right? We talk about serotonin, dopamine, and antidepressants. But what if that's only one piece of a much larger puzzle? What if the real key to our mood, our energy, and our mental well-being is found not just in our heads, but throughout our entire body? Well, today, we're going to dive deep into the powerful and often overlooked connection between our hormones and our mental state. So this really is the central question we're exploring. For millions and millions of people, the answer to this has been a resounding yes. But there's a growing wave of research suggesting that before we start trying to rebalance chemicals in the brain, we might need to look at a much more fundamental system first, our hormones. All right, so to kick things off, we're going to explore a completely different way of thinking about mental health. We're gonna step beyond that purely brain-focused model and into the much broader, and you could argue more fundamental, world of metabolic health. Okay, so take a look at this. On the left, you've got the model we all know, the neurotransmitter model. It's been the dominant way of thinking for decades. But on the right, we have the emerging metabolic model. And this view suggests that our mental health is deeply, deeply connected to our body's ability to produce and use energy. It puts things like our mitochondria, our hormones, and inflammation right at the center of the conversation. And that brings us to the absolute foundation of this metabolic model. These tiny little power plants that are humming away inside pretty much every single cell in your body. These are mitochondria. And yeah, you probably remember them from high school biology as the powerhouses of the cell. But honestly, their job is so much bigger than just creating energy. Think of them as these tiny, sophisticated regulators that control countless functions in your body that directly impact how you feel every single day. This quote just hits the nail on the head. This isn't about ignoring psychology or social stress. It's about understanding the biological engine that makes us either resilient to those things or vulnerable. I mean, if the power plants in a city start to fail, the whole city becomes vulnerable, right? It's the same idea. And just look at how critical these jobs are. Mitochondria are literally involved in making the very neurotransmitters that antidepressants try to manipulate. They control inflammation, which we now know is heavily linked to depression. They even influence our gut health and our basic motivation to eat right and move our bodies. So the huge point here is this. If your mitochondria aren't working right, it can set off this cascade of problems that looks and feels exactly like a mental health disorder. So where do hormones fit into this whole picture? Let's get specific because when these powerful chemical messengers are out of balance, the symptoms can feel profoundly psychological. Let's start with a big one, testosterone. Now, we usually think of it in terms of muscle and libido, but testosterone is a crucial neuroactive hormone. It influences everything from how your brain releases dopamine to how your serotonin neurons fire. It's a major player in the brain. Now, just look at these symptoms, depressed mood, fatigue, can't concentrate. Does that sound familiar? It should. It is almost a perfect match for the diagnostic criteria for major depression. And that is not a coincidence. It's a direct reflection of just how powerful testosterone's role is in your brain function and your overall sense of vitality. And the science really backs this up. This isn't just a theory. This analysis, which looked at 51 different studies, found that getting testosterone levels back to an optimal range actually improves depression. It's not just covering up symptoms, it's potentially addressing a physiological root cause, and importantly, doing it safely. Okay, but it's not all about testosterone. Let's talk about two other key players on the team, progesterone and DHEA. You can kind of think of these as the body's natural calming and feel-good hormones. Progesterone creates these byproducts in the body that have this incredible anti-anxiety effect. They actually work on the same calming receptors in your brain that anti-anxiety meds target. DHEA has been shown directly to improve mood. And here's a really crucial point. The type of hormone matters. Natural progesterone is protective for the brain, while the synthetic versions called progestins are actually linked to causing depression. All right, next up is the master regulator of your body's entire energy system, your thyroid hormone. And specifically, we need to talk about T3, which is the active form of the hormone. So while your body makes other thyroid hormones, T3 is the one that really gets the job done inside your cells. It's way more active than its precursor, T4. And low levels of T3 aren't just tied to things like fatigue and brain fog, they're actually a strong predictor of poor outcomes for heart patients. And this is so important. You can have all the symptoms of low thyroid even when your TSH, which is the standard screening test, comes back totally normal. So after hearing all that, 
how should we approach this? Well, it really suggests that we need a pretty big shift in our thinking, a foundational shift. Honestly, this slide says it all. On the left, you've got the official checklist for depression. On the right, the symptoms of the hormonal issues we just talked about. They are practically identical. So the question is, are you depressed or is your body just struggling with a fundamental metabolic and hormonal problem? It's impossible to tell the difference without actually looking under the hood. This points to a new and I think much more logical way forward. First, you have to recognize this incredible symptom overlap. Second, before jumping to a psychiatric label, investigate your foundational health, get a complete hormone panel. Third, work on fixing any metabolic issues you find at their root. And then, and only then, reevaluate how you're feeling mentally. You might be absolutely amazed at what clears up when your body's core systems are finally running the way they're supposed to. And all of this brings us to the ultimate takeaway. It's a really empowering change in perspective. Here it is, plain and simple. Your brain does not operate in a vacuum. It's a biological organ, and it is deeply, inextricably connected to the metabolic health of your entire body. A struggling mind is very often the first and most obvious symptom of a struggling body. You are not broken. Your system might just be out of balance. So I want to leave you with this question. If you've struggled with your mental health, if treatments just haven't seemed to work for you, what might change if you started asking different questions? What could you possibly discover by looking not just at your brain, but at the foundational hormones that run the entire system? If this is a topic that resonates with you and you want to learn more about how to investigate your own metabolic health and start optimizing your hormones, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're dedicated to exploring these topics to empower you on your health journey. Thanks for watching.